My name is Steve Seuss. I'm VP and Engineering Manager of Applied Concepts. Welcome to the first in our YouTube series of videos called Driver Ed. Today we're going to discuss LED 101 and the basic differences between a resistive load and an LED load. Now, we just put up a simple Ohm's Law formula here to show that suppose that we had a resistive load that had a impedance or resistance of 3 ohms, as indicated by Mr. Edison's light bulb here, and we impressed 3 volts a voltage across it, we would expect one amp of current to flow. Of course, double the voltage, we would expect double the current because the impedance is fixed for all practical purposes. However, when we look at an LED load, it's a different story. An LED, by virtue of it having a fixed voltage drop, and to be sure this varies in practicality, but in case of this example, let's assume that it stays 3 volts. Then if we were to drive one current or one amp of current through this load, then that would imply that there's three ohms of impedance related to that load. Drive two amps of current, and we'd see that that impedance must change to half or one and a half ohms to be able to maintain that same forge drop. So what's happening here? Well, what we have is that we have a variable impedance load, one that is a negative coefficient. The higher the current, the lower the impedance. This is exactly why we need an LED driver, something that will regulate on current rather than regulate on the fixed voltages in the case of a uh, incandescent light bulb. We'd like to move now to the lab and we'll show you a practical demonstration of this so you get a feel for exactly what's happening here. Okay, what we've done here is we've set up the circuit that we've just discussed in the lab. We have a voltmeter to monitor the voltage across an incandescent bulb and an ammeter to monitor the current through it. This incandescent bulb basically is our fixed resistive load. And as we increase voltage, you'll see that increase here on this meter, you'll see a corresponding increase in current. And again, you'll see these two move at a fairly equal rate because we have a fixed impedance. And so obeying Ohm's law, we have something that changes pretty much in a very linear fashion. Now let's contrast that with the change in load. Let's put on an LED load. Now right off the bat, notice that we have a voltage applied, but yet we have no light from the LEDs because we haven't overcome its forward voltage yet, the cumulative forward drop. But as we start to increase this voltage, you'll notice suddenly the LEDs start to come alive, and with very small changes in voltage, look at what the current's doing. It's increasing dramatically. So ultimately what you see here that's different from the light bulb is that very small changes in voltage result in very large changes in current. So a fixed voltage source is not what we need to drive a load such as this. What we need is something that's programmed to regulate on current and ultimately when that current is reached the voltage that would be across that load is essentially the forward voltage drop of the cumulative string of LEDs at that current. Okay, now that we've discussed a little bit about the unique um, uh, impedance variations with an LED, let's look at ways to connect them. Often in a backlight, a uh, typical hybrid backlight, you can have many LEDs. So connecting them properly so that they share current is of utmost importance. Now often if you look at an LED data sheet, you'll find two circuits that they absolutely do not, do not recommend as a way to connect LEDs. One of course is just simply placing them in parallel. Not good because there's no guarantee that they will share current. Another one might be to put a resistor to limit the current, but here again, the three LEDs are still in parallel. They are not guaranteed to share current. The only way that you're guaranteed to share current is if somehow you could have independent branches, which could consist of one LED, but often many, as we show here. And if you were to use an inefficient method of a simple current limiting resistor, then you would place a current limiting resistor in each branch, place your fixed voltage source across, and you would be guaranteed then that the current would flow properly through each branch. But here again, very inefficient. This is basically the reason why we want to get an LED driver working for us because by the time this resistor could be made to uh, practically control the current under varying conditions of heat uh, as the LED forward drop changes, you'll find that you would almost have to dissipate as much power in this resistor as you would in the complete string. Again, very inefficient way. So now we'll move towards what an LED driver does for us in this regard. Okay, now we move to something that will be found in a more typical application. First and foremost, we start off with a constant current source. Our product line is known as iDrive. Typically, we would find 12 volts as a, uh, the application power in a system. And not that there might not be others, but we'll start with uh, the vast majority, which are 12 volts. And what we have here is 
we show three strings of LEDs can be as high as potentially maybe 40 LEDs at 3 volts. Well, this would equate to a forward voltage that the LED constant current source has to um, develop, which is about 120 volts. Now, that may seem high, but this is very practical for a number of reasons. The first is, is that it limits the number of parallel channels that have to be used, and it also decreases the amount of current that are on those parallel channels. So the end result is in these larger panels where we have a limited amount of space to be able to get these channels physically out of the LED rails, we find that exploiting voltage a little bit higher and keeping the current down is a great way to keep a system to be, first of all, very practical and possible to be designed, as well as it greatly enhances the efficiency of the system. Efficiencies of 90% or better can be had by switching currents that are a little bit lower and developing voltages of upwards of 120 volts. So what have we discussed as a whole now? Well, we've discussed that the variable impedance of an LED, negative in its, in its coefficient, is why we need an iDrive or an LED driver. We've discussed a proper way to connect many LEDs. And the whole reason is to look at the system as a whole and to provide the most efficient and most practical combination to be able to give the uh, user of these systems the best, most efficient solution. Well, that's it. You've just seen our first video, LED Driver 101. Please visit us at acipower.com, our website, or subscribe to our YouTube channel where you'll find many more videos in the future to include examples of our various product lines, discussions on how to properly use them, as well as troubleshooting techniques and some future technology that we'll be bringing to the backlight industry. Thanks again. My name is Steve Seuss, and thank you for watching.